개쇼하지 말고 일어나. 오! Cash strap contestants seeing red and it's what's on the inside that counts. Today we are breaking down and reacting to all of the grim medical scenes and high stakes injuries from Squid Game. Let's dive right in. 얼마 있는데? 400이야. 일단 이거 받으시고 나머지는 제가 다음 달까지 꼭. 오이. Oh, yeah. Okay, so get punched in the nose. Sometimes you bleed right away. If you start to bleed like that, if you're able to, pinch your nose and lean forward. If you lean back, you're gonna get the blood to drip down the back of your throat, cause you to be nauseous and might actually vomit, make things worse. Oh, don't do that. Eating, licking somebody else's blood, don't recommend that. You can't do that. It's being ingested. You can spread infection. You worry about hepatitis B and C, as well as HIV. It's no good. Oh, oh no. Oh, don't do that. So yes, there are blood vessels here in the nose, on the septum, on either side. There's something called Kesselbeck's plexus, which is basically a lot of vessels there that can bleed quite easily. Some people's nasal tissue are a lot more frail to have the capillaries break open and bleed a lot. We also get bad bleeding in the posterior aspect of the nose, which actually could be life-threatening if a vessel ruptures open. Very dangerous. <laughs> He's asking for his fingerprint. We all have our own unique fingerprints. Here in the United States, when you're born in a hospital, typically you get footprints and handprints. As a medical professional, I've had to do fingerprinting myself for me to prescribe certain medications. Oi. Oh, blood coming from the mouth. Could be the airway or the mouth at that point. Why are you vomiting blood? If say you're shot in the stomach or you're shot in the intestine and you're leaking blood into those organs. Oh, he's moving. So shot on the left back through and through. If it's going directly through the lung, it can cause a hemothorax, a pneumothorax, or typically a combination of a hemopneumothorax. <laughs> She's got somebody else's blood on the face. In your face. Potentially hit the eyes, mucous membrane. If there's any bloodborne pathogen in that blood, it could be transmitted via the eyes. Oh, she's gonna move and she's gonna get shot, yep. We see a lot of gunshot wounds at hospitals here in the United States. Typically, you actually end up going to a trauma center. Sometimes you'll end up at a normal emergency department because you might not be able to make it. Oh, no. So this game, so to speak, is about like steady hands, taking your time. Most surgeons out there are super steady. Steady hand. An easy way to prevent your hand from shaking is actually just to anchor your hand. So using either the side of your arm, the hand, your pinky. Holy cow. They did a pretty good job relating to what things would look like. I'm not a blood splatter expert, but you definitely get skull fragments, brain matter, and blood that will all come flying out. If it hits a certain part of the brain, you're gonna be alive for a short period of time if it's not directly hitting the areas of the brain relating to respirations and breathing. But once the swelling kicks in, then it's going to go through different effects relating to brain herniation, which will affect those areas. Remember these metal slides? I've seen so many videos of people getting injured. Blood actually is quite sticky. Sticky! Is it sticky? So it could actually cause a lot of issues. Whoa, I forgot about these scenes. I've been in many, many operating rooms when I was in training. As a non-surgical resident, we did kind of more minimal things like suture 
the skin wounds closed or we would help like retract to keep things open. Retract! Wait, trying to do this on no sleep and only crappy food. I feel like that's every resident out there who's on a surgical rotation. There's a lot more rules nowadays that regulate how many hours that you can work in a row and how many hours in a week. I remember when I was a resident many, many, many years ago, we got capped at 80 hours a week. So it's like an X lap. So they're doing like a exploratory laparotomy maybe. Everything is open in the abdomen. Oh, oh they're harvesting organs. Awful. I've actually never been in a procedure relating to harvesting organs, but it's an amazing gift. It is a gift. That somebody is able to donate their organs to somebody else who will actually be able to survive. The individual getting the organ has to do a really good job of taking care of themselves. This setting, obviously it's clean procedure. It doesn't seem to be as sterile. They're just trying to protect themselves from getting bloody. In a sterile situation, you're having sterile gowns, sterile gloves, you're wearing a mask, you're wearing eye shields. Holy cow. You don't just flap the skin open in these massive holes. You use the smallest incision possible to do certain procedures. You actually have different types of tools to actually retract the body cavity open to minimize how much you're opening the body. In the U.S., no, no. The individuals that are performing surgery, board certified surgeon and any subspecialty that that surgeon is, sometimes medical students under the supervision and consent, but typically not office managers. <laughs> There must be a recently deceased individual, a lot of blood still. They're trying to mimic how the tissue would be. It's a little bit more flappy, so to speak. But if you have a thick amount of subcutaneous tissue underneath there, it could move in that particular way. Oy. Very interesting, very intense. I just remember I did not like standing there for, you know, four, five, six, seven hours doing the same thing, especially, you know, you're sweating underneath all the sterile gowns and all that stuff. I'd rather be out moving around, seeing multiple patients. Squid game, okay. It's pretty grotesque, but it actually gives us injuries that do happen on a daily basis all around the world. Also, big new things on the horizon. Check out my brand new supplement company, Life Happens. If you guys enjoyed this, definitely check out this playlist right here. And as always, make sure you subscribe, turn your bell notifications on, and hit that like button for me. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.